Hey guys, gals, friends, and pals. This is Polystex Twitch, and welcome to another episode of Saturday Game School, where we learn about a different game every Saturday of the year. Tonight, I am joined on mic by Icky Lyle. Hey guys. And we also have Perfect Zero, Tom. I am the most perfect of the zeros. Extremely. And also, Brandy Cat's off to the side. Hey. We are very happy to be streaming Earth Defense Force World Brothers for Steam. This game is also on PlayStation 4 and 5 and Switch. I actually reviewed it at Co-Optimus recently. I, I played the Switch and the Steam versions for my review. And we're happy to be streaming it. It's part of my one of my very favorite game series, Earth Defense Force. We're gonna tonight we're gonna play in co-op, online co-op, four player, baby. Alright. So all four of us are in the lobby. This supports four player online co-op. The PlayStation 4 version also has two player split screen, but the other versions do not. Um oh. I have to click on, every time I do anything, I have to click back on the game. All right. I don't usually stream PC games, so it takes a little getting used to. But first thing we're going to do, guys, we're going to hop into a weapon farming level and do one farm of it because somebody wasn't around to farm earlier. But we're going to very quickly try to catch them up once. So there's, there's five difficulties. At the start, there's only three, easy, normal, and hard. But when you beat the game on any difficulty, you unlock Hardest. And when you beat Hardest, you unlock Inferno. Then there's also a DLC that adds some extra levels and a sixth difficulty, which we haven't unlocked because you have to beat Inferno, and that's going to take us a while. Cool, I'm glad you like the colors, BX Latino. Yeah, the Earth Defense Force games normally have decently realistic graphics. They, they're a little bit low budget as far as visuals go, so this is not a series that you ever play to get the hottest graphics. But this particular game was designed from the ground up to be, first of all, to run on the Switch perfectly. So they picked a visual style that would go with that. And they also wanted a style that was welcoming to kids and new players. So they've chosen this because, obviously, Minecraft and voxel games, they're fairly popular among kids. So this way you could get kids, hopefully, interested in EDF. But it also allows them to have an absolute ton of characters. Let me just show you real quick. There are, like, a hundred, over 180 characters in this game. And... You just have to basically rescue them during the levels, and there's so many different characters to find and rescue, and a few DLC characters that are totally optional. They're from all different countries, because this is World Brothers, so the idea is that you're rescuing people from around the world and getting them to help you out. <laughs> yeah, that's true, Tyler. There was a girl in bikini. Okay, so we've picked Mission 46. This is the best weapon farming level. Everybody should have the best, like, highest level weapons they can. And we're just going to run in and do it once. And this will... We're on a high difficulty, so this may actually take a little while. But let's find out. Ready up, Brandy Bell. I already did, but I guess I have to do it again. There you go. You will, because I asked you to. I was ready. I know, I'm kidding. It was the bug. One slightly little annoying thing about the loading is once it loads up the game, you still have to push A at the end of the loading process. So you can't, like, start the game loading and walk off and come back because it won't be... You'll still have to push A, and everybody else in your team is waiting for you. It's a little minor thing. Hey, Jesus Ninja, we're glad you made it. <laughs> yeah, there. this game does have some what you might consider racial caricatures or stereotypes. But, it's, you know, Japanese developer. Anyway, here I am rescuing somebody. We'll all get this character afterwards. The characters come with different random weapons, because there's a ton of different weapons you can get, too. Although not as many as in a regular EDF game. So rescuing characters is very important, just because that's how you get weapons and new characters. If anybody goes up straight to them, uh, let me know. By the way, this character I'm playing, the Dragon Sister, she can punch through buildings, which is super cool and important for getting buildings out of the way. There's really good building destruction in this. Like, this building here, you can get on all the different little individual levels of it. Even though there's no furniture, it's still really neat, because a normal EDF game, you just damage a building and it falls over. But in this one, you can actually hop in and take cover, things like that. So what I'm doing is I'm trying to get all these buildings out of the way to make sniping easier. 
All five are gotten. <laughs> Takro, protecting the city is extremely optional. You know, I yes. mean, maybe if we're in the right mood one day we might protect it, but we prefer to think of the city as being here to serve us. Typical Americans. But yeah, EDF games always have environmental destruction. They always have buildings you can blow up. And it's always kind of a fun disconnect between the story of the game and what you're actually doing, because you're actually tearing up the city rather than trying to preserve it. It's sort of like being in the movie Man of Steel. Thank you, Jesus Ninja. It has been a really cool week. In case everyone hasn't heard the news, I started back up as an editor at the website Cooptimus. So I've been writing all week. By the way, we're finding these two baby kaijus here. So I'm just going to help my team out by sniping at it. Weapons take longer to reload in this game than in other EDFs. And in fact, than in most games. But the reason for that is you are intended to switch to a different character while they are reloading. They're dead. Because you got us Nice, we did good. Help. I've got four characters on my team. We all do. So four people, four I characters. 16 good. total people. So I can just switch with the D-pad to any of these characters when I'm ready to use them. Now we're fighting the Mama Kaiju, which is a really tough enemy. And if we can pull this off, we beat the level. Like this, That's the objective of the level. And we're doing this level because it drops really high-level weapons sometimes. So all we got to do is survive this challenge, and we get good stuff. A big part of the EDF experience is farming for weapons and armor. In this particular game, you don't have to pick up armor off the ground. Like in a normal EDF, you'd be running around picking up armor off the ground when the enemies drop it. In this one, the enemy drops don't matter very much. They're just health pickups and special move pickups, which fill up your special move meter. So the the characters that we rescued at the beginning of the level, that's all that we really needed to do there. Now I'm going to fly around because he's looking at me. Oh, God. oh, he killed my dragon sister. I hate when that happens. Since we're on the highest difficulty, it can be one-shot kills. Alright, where are you? But you can pick up your own people. You don't even have to wait for somebody else to come rescue you. And that's really neat. <laughs> You're right, Tyler. See, that's because I've been playing EDF for a long time, so I've really honed my techniques. So, remember, there's over 180 characters. You start out with just one or two, but you'll pick up more every level you play. There's always one or more characters to rescue. So, I I built this team the way I wanted. I've got two flying characters with sniper rifles. Then I've got a close-range guy. This is the Prowl Rider from Earth Defense Force Iron Rain, which is another spin-off from this same developer, Japanese developer Yukes. And then I've got the Dragon Sister, whom I've already shown off. Now, they've dropped in a Varga, a mech, for us to use to fight the monster, so I'm going to try to do that. Sometimes this goes well, and sometimes it doesn't. But look how huge I am. Everybody else is like a little insect to me in this huge thing. And that is really cool. The scale of it, you know? And if you were seeing their screens, I look absolutely massive to them, just like the monster looked to me. Yeah, I wish the enemies had health bars. That would be so nice, because this enemy has probably got like a million health or... Some very high number like that. Maybe even more than a million. But he's not knocking my Varga over. So I'm getting some good hits in, and that's important. The Varga's very, very slow to turn around. And now he's on top of me, which makes it hard to see and know what I'm doing. But I'm still getting some good hits. Like We've got him at least halfway down, I would say. Yep, very drops. Nice. There we go. There's a combo I'm using, because you control both arms independently, so I'm doing right, right, left. Somebody is... Uh, wow. I just... I don't know what was happening there, but... So I wish it wasn't on top of me, because it looks goofy, obviously. But my party, they're doing great damage to him, firing at him from down below. <laughs> yep, I'm punching him right in the taint, Tyler. That's the best way to do it, if you're all the dragons as well. Oh yeah. 
you can beat this guy without using the mech. Like, the mech is just the easiest way. But if you just plug away at him long enough and manage to avoid being killed, you'll get him. By the way, I'm going to have to buy a new headset soon. My sound is really... the wire seems to be damaged. You still with us, Tom? Tom, are you talking? Can you hear him? Icky, are you with us? I don't know what's going on with my co-hosts, whether they're we just did. not talking. He's hey, dead. we did it! And by the way, that was a cool attack. Who did that? You did it. That was me. Look at uh, the audio is clipping in and out from the uh, Skype. I hope that mother is reunited. Okay, I was wondering what was up. I'm glad you're still with us. <laughs> Good job, team. We did it. Shame that yeah. I didn't get to use my attack to the very last second, though. <laughs> it happens. Okay. But it looked cool. Oops. Okay, I should have gotten out of the monster's body when I did that, but... <laughs> Good to see you, Royal Bob. Glad you and it, Living Dead Girl are with us. How you been, Living Dead Girl? I heard you guys got a new house recently. Like, I mean, probably a year ago or something, right? I don't know how long ago it was. But I hope your place is nice. Now, after we beat the level, we find out what we got. Like, uh, whether the characters we picked up came with good weapons and accessories. Here we go. Also, this game names an MVP. Whoever did the most damage to the enemies overall gets named MVP, which is just a cool little thing. Previous EDF games haven't evaluated your performance like that. But this is how much life I got on all my characters. You can see they picked up a bunch. And the character on the right, the pink wing diver, I haven't used her before, so she gets extra life to basically pick her up to a normal level where everybody else is. It's a weird system. So this guy came with an elite glove. He's an American boxer, the boxer brother. And he leveled up. When you get duplicates of characters, that gives them experience and levels them up. When they level up, they can start using new types of weapons. So they start out only being able to use one weapon type, but eventually they'll be able to use them all, which is really cool. Because uh, once you get to that point, once you've leveled everybody up a bunch, then you can just pick whoever you want, you know, and they, they'll all be able to use whatever guns. And then the difference really comes down to what their special abilities are. That guy came with zebra shoes. Weird. I didn't finish pushing A, but it still loaded us back into the... Did... Did you guys see what all we got? Oh yeah, yeah. I heard Elder Scrolls... The Elder Scrolls Online is messed up on some people's Series X's right now. Some kind of bug. So um, I guess... I saw everything. You did? Because I yeah, didn't. Did we, we get any level 4 level fours. Great. We got a Dark Fenrir. F-I-N. Dark Fenrir? Yeah, that one. Didn't we already have that? Yes. We got the higher level one. Well, that, that's good for you. It is a good weapon, Tom. I believe it. it's like an assault rifle 2 with homing, so it's really good for hitting aerial weapon enemies and just basically everything. So we're going to do the very first level on Inferno difficulty and just see how it goes. So again, Tom, I recommend you pick level 4 weapons and whatever good accessories you have. I've already got my people set up decently well, I think. But let's have a look at the weapons list. So there's melee weapons in this one, like this girl. She's got something that allows her to punch so well, but there's all kinds of swords and stuff, too. Then special weapons contain a lot of different kinds of things that don't fit in other categories. Two kinds of assault rifles, shotguns, and it tells you if they're new, so you can remember to try them out if you want. You can see their stats on the right side of the screen. Close range weapons, which I don't tend to favor, but they can be very strong. Sniper rifles, which I do favor because I always like sniping in games. I like being able to keep my distance because, you know, I'm not the fastest guy, so keeping my distance helps make up for my poor reaction time, I think. Rocket launchers, which are explosive and can destroy buildings. Artillery, very powerful shots. Missile launchers, which tend to be homing and they're mostly for aerial stuff. That's my baby. And that's it for, oh, which one? The fork? No, oh, Wild Leviathan. That's probably really good. Look at that, 99,000 damage. That's insane. But, all right, here we go. Let's do our best. Need you ready up, Tom. All right, trying to pick weapons. Yeah. 
Platinum says he wasn't very impressed by the update to Elder Scrolls Online that improves the graphics and stuff. I still like how it looks. Uh, you need yeah, to undo. Well, uh, uh oh. Undo, undo. There are some, there are some problems, like some bugginess problems with the online multiplayer on Steam. So I think we're running into that right now. You have to unready. I, how do I do that? I'm pushing B. Like, yeah. Oh. Yeah, it's not doing anything. There's the chat wheel. Okay, will that do it? No. Nope. All right, I'm gonna. We're gonna have to recreate the room. And again, this game just came out three weeks ago on Steam, and they still have a lot of bugs to fix. I don't think the PlayStation 4 and Switch versions are that buggy because they were already out in Japan for months before they brought them to English markets. But it is a drag. Me too, Thyrenia. Brandy and I, we plan to start playing ESO pretty soon. But I've got some other stuff I have to review first. There we go. I've just invited everybody again, and we will try again. Because the game is messing with us. It's just the party function. Yeah, it's just the online multiplayer. Like, you can play single player, and you probably won't hit any bugs. But they've just got to iron out these kinks here. And they have updated it already a few times, so they'll they'll keep going and get it fixed eventually, I'm sure. Like, EDF5 is not very buggy at all. But it's been out for a couple years. Uh, it's buggy, just bugs don't kill the game usually. Yeah, not like online multiplayer bugs is what I mean. Mostly it just works right. Come on, Brady Bill. Yep. There we go. First level, let's see how it goes. So this game actually does have a story with cinematics and stuff. This, it's actually, I mean, I would say it's got more cinematics than a regular EDF game. But still, most of the story is told through radio chatter while you're playing. But in this one, they do subtitle the radio chatter, which is nice. So you can see the subtitles at the bottom. Yeah, the Dark Legion is the enemy faction this time. It's made up of enemies from several different EDF games. So there's a ton of fan service in this game for fans of the series. Sniping at these ants. I'm going to run up and use my Prowl Rider. The Prowl Rider has a really cool ability. He's got grappling hooks, so he's kind of like Spider-Man. You can just grapple around. Also like Attack on Titan. Enemies drop health like that. Wing Divers can fly, but they cannot fly as far as in a normal EDF game, and that does get annoying. Right now, they just made a joke about how the enemies have different names in different EDF games. Sorry. Ah! Time to get out of here. They're hitting me. God! Yeah! <laughs> Never using those missiles. Please be careful where you're aiming. Yep. That's why I said sorry. Thyrenia, I think you're plenty bouncy already. Don't sell yourself short. Ooh. Not towards Icky. So this being the highest regular difficulty, the enemies do a lot of damage, and we have to be really careful. But we're doing okay. And I've got a radar in the upper right corner that shows me where the enemies are. They're the red dots, of course. Okay. You can zoom in when you have a sniper rifle, of course. The default button for it is right bumper, which is not very intuitive. In a regular EDF game, it would be left bumper, which works a lot better when you're trying to work the right trigger. And I just, I keep forgetting to fix it. But I don't actually zoom in very often at all, because usually you can see the enemies even if you're not zoomed in, so it's not that important. Okay, grabbing this guy. Alright, the pink exclamation marks are characters that we have to rescue, so we just got them. One left. All right, now we've got enemies called Sideros coming in. These are from Earth Defense Force Iron Rain. And I'm using my dragon sister here because she's really good at punching large enemies to death. And they often don't hit her while she's doing it. Yep, just knock that one out. 
Oh, gotta get away from there. Somebody's using explosives. Anyway. Yeah, ah. stop. <laughs> So the, the Sidorosus in a real in the real game they came from, Iron Rain, are extremely deadly. Like they're a big bad deal. But in this, they're not as bad as long as you've got good weapons to handle them. The characters talk a lot. Like th this character when she's shooting, she kept saying fools, fools. And that gets old, you know? Japanese games like to overuse voice clips for attacks and stuff. I wish they wouldn't. But it's not a huge deal. Okay, I'm way too high up. Controlling her moves can be a little difficult. We're doing alright, though. Bob Jones, we're glad you made it, dude. Ow! What hit me? So this character, she can also fly around on a cloud. I don't know if I pointed that out. She can't go up and down with it, but it's great for traversing large distances. Ow! Oh, just got killed. Oh, look at that. Thank you for picking me up. Now, there should be one more round of Sidoroses, right? Yep. Okay, so we want to grab health while we can. I'll do that. Leave the fighting to them. I'm glad you guys are having a nice hangout day. It's so great that you all watch our stream at the same time. Oh, Vias Latino Heat, that's very nice of you. Thank you, dude. Oh, that was it. We did it. We beat all the enemies. You can tell if the music changes. Yeah, once the music changes, you know you've won. Mission complete. You still run around and attack and stuff, but we can't actually kill each other once we've completed the mission. Unlike in regular EDFs. R.I.P. That's, well. Go Lyle. Hey, go Icky. Icky's kicking that butt. We got pretty good health drops from that. So I got a Sparta brother. He's a Spartan, of course. Royal brother. He's a royal guard from England. Oh, and he leveled up. He can use a lot of weapon types. El Dorado brother. So it's like South American, I guess. Here's a variant, because there's three variants of most enemy, I mean, most classes. And the variants have different stats and different colors, so it's just sort of a way of slightly customizing how that type of character is going to behave. Alpha, beta, gamma. There you go. Yeah, alpha, beta, and gamma. The main game of Earth Defense Force World Brothers has 60 missions, and you're intended to beat them on all five difficulty levels. So... In a regular EDF game, they would want you to beat, like, say, 80 or 100 missions on all five difficulties, but they would want you to do that with four different classes. With this, it doesn't track which classes you're using or whatever, so you don't have to beat it as many times, basically, if you're being a completionist. And that's why I'm, like, 80% through with the base game, whereas in a regular EDF game, I might be 20% through, maybe, you know. So it's less content, which... But it's still a lot of content. I just think it's less daunting. Like, it's more approachable this way. Uh, looks like we've got a contest coming up. Katamari Damashi Reroll, a really cool remake of the original Katamari, Katamari game. For Steam, donated by Tom, who's on mic with us. Thank you. Okay, Brandy, you need to unready and ready back up. <laughs> I'm on mic as well. Oh, sure. <laughs> Yeah, what a nice guy Tom is. Now we're in China. I'm gonna uh, there's punch some buildings hills. down if it lets me. Be careful. Good, it does. So we got some anthills here. We need to kill those anthills. Snipe at it from a distance. I just blow it up with fire. I like blowing things up with fire. Nice. Big green anthill here. It's dead. What yes. green anthill? <laughs> There's another one. Yes. There were actually no anthills in Earth Defense Force 5, or, or almost none. I think in the DLC there's some, but in the base game there's not. 
normally th there are these, and they just they spawn enemies, you know. Earth Defense Force Five just had enemies spawned by dropships and things like that. And this does also have dropships. What's your so, Bob Jones, you say you've had an interesting day. What is one interesting thing that has happened today? I would love to hear about it. Yeah, well, let's destroy some buildings ASAP. I think the buildings are just as dangerous. <laughs> exactly, dude. They're just as dangerous as the enemies. If we don't take care of them, who will? You know the city's overpopulated, right? So this will get them to move out. We're basically gentrifying the, the neighborhood. Destroy those buildings. This is like demolition man. <laughs> yeah, well, I don't suppose we can fix China in real life, so. I mean the whole gentrification comment. Oh, yeah. Ah, don't make me think about that. All right, let's kill this anthill. Gonna be the prow rider here. Shoot it with the thunderbow. Tom, we got the level four thunderbow, and it's quite good. Oh, you suck. I want eight thunderbow. That actually, actually, what I want is a lightning. Yeah, I wonder if there is a lightning bow or not. I guess we'll have to keep, have one. keep grinding and find out. You got Thunderbow. I don't know if it's this, you know, they're not exactly the same. Yeah, Lightning Bow is a medium range weapon, and it's awesome. Indeed. My favorite guy weapon is the GS5. Darker Player says this looks like a Lego game. I mean, there's some visual similarity to Legos, but the Lego games are not voxel graphic based. You know, like. I, to me, this looks more like Minecraft than that. But also the enemies have more detail than the actual enemies in Minecraft. They're made up of more blocks, basically. This is a uh, Minecraft. There's another uh, ant hill. <laughs> Good, down. <laughs> there you go. But, I mean, like, uh, some people, some fans of the series have looked at this game, which is a spinoff, and they've been inclined not to play it because the visual style is so different. But I was it's, put off by it. Yeah, Brandy and Tom both were put off by it, and they're not the only ones. But it still feels like an Earth Defense Force game. Like, the actual core gameplay, the combat, and the movement, they still feel right. And it's still got the addictive collecting of things. It's a big part of the EDF experience. And plus, there's all that fan service that's in there specifically to please people who've played other Earth Defense Force games. And that uh, that stuff is very rewarding, but it also wouldn't. It's not like it would hurt you if you hadn't played an EDF. Good job, team! Cruising through Inferno difficulty, I love it. And I'm just gonna sling around the city. I mean, the variety of classes and their abilities is really impressive. Some characters can dash, some characters can fly, some characters can grapple, some can throw turrets. Thank you, Tyler. Yeah, I mean, I agree with that. Like, to me, it's cool because it stands out. Like, it's a serious third-person action shooter, although it has a sense of humor. I... But it looks so much different than the average one. And yeah, the regular EDF games are not usually that pretty, although I think Earth Defense Force 5 looks pretty decent. Um, my big problem with the EDF is the movement of the characters. In this one, you have so many options that you don't get hung up that... You know, she didn't fly that far, or you can only, you know. Yeah, oh. like for instance, even though I wish the wing divers could fly farther, because I've got two wing divers, I can fly with one until her energy runs out, then instantly swap to the other one and keep flying. Like, you oh. just have all these cool options because of how you set up your team. Almost instantly. Yeah, I mean, almost. But, but you could do stuff like that. Or I can switch to the prow rider and start grappling after I've been flying while still in the air. <laughs> Tile from now on. Is that how I said Tyler's name earlier? Yep. <laughs> now we are going to level 3 on Inferno. 
So one thing about the story of this game, which again, it's like semi-serious, but it's also pretty jokey, is this particular game has characters with personalities and stuff, and regular EDF games often don't have much of that, especially not Part 5. So this level is introducing us to the cowboy character, and I think, what's his first name? Is it Joe or something? He'll say it. But he just goes by Cowboy Brother normally. So it'll spend you, like, several levels introducing you to a character, and then they'll pop up later in the story, too. And it gives the game more personality. Because, like I said, Part 5, the characters don't even have names. They're like, they just call them by their class. They're just like, Fencer, you know, and they don't even give them a name. So, zero personality. This Somebody didn't is a lot get better in. for that. Uh-oh. Yeah, it was Ziggy. Alright, well, we're going to let the cinematic play and then I'll retreat to get you back in. Joe, that is his name. Also, in the story, does, don't they give you the character after they finish? Yeah, like you'll get yeah. that character when they're introduced. Here's one thing. I said the Steam version has some buggy online multiplayer. It's decently often it will drop one player when, or sometimes two players when starting a match. So... When that happens, you got to back out and get him back in. So let's invite Icky back in. And sometimes you're readied up and it won't go. So you have to unready and then deploy again. Yeah, and I wish you didn't have these problems, but this is not uncommon with a PC game, and they're very likely to be fixed in the near future. Oh, yeah. We're just really enjoying the game at launch, you know, just trying to get the most out of it that we can since all four of us have the game. All right, let's redeploy, everyone. Redeploy. Good luck. Good to eating. see you, Torky. Also, Spazpol, we're glad you made it. Spazpol, I thought you were out camping in the wilderness. Have you gotten back from that? That's a good question. Royal Bob asks, should you stick with just a few characters at the highest difficulty? And the answer is sort of. Let's all skip this, guys, because we just watched mm -hmm. it. Skip it, Icky. He's running he the contest. Interest. Dang it, Lyle. <laughs> uh, anyway, characters gain health by playing with them. So if you haven't played with a character, they won't have as much health as someone you've been playing with, right? So Icky, for instance, he's used the default starting ranger throughout the entire game. So his ranger has a ton of health that he's accrued. So the thing is, because of that, switching to a new character, like on a high difficulty, they're not going to have enough life, and that can be frustrating. I mean... It somewhat discourages switching over to them. But I did mention earlier, someone who is a fresh character gains health at a higher rate than someone who's not a fresh character. So that character you haven't used much of, they'll probably get like three times as much health from each mission you play with them. So, which is a weird thing. But also, some characters just inherently gain health at higher rates than others. Like the wing divers in this series, they traditionally don't have as much health as everybody else, right? So they gain health at a lower rate than a lot of characters. And some characters, like the Fencer, they're meant to be more of a tank character. They gain health at a higher rate. Okay, I'm getting the one in the back. Way to go, Torky! I'm almost there. Oh, actually, I think somebody else is there, too. So I should be fighting the enemies, but I'm still taking out buildings just to make life easier for everyone. Especially on this level. Yeah. The spiders, they hide behind buildings and stuff, and it's a lot easier to hit them if the buildings aren't in the way. So, but also, Royal Bob, there are characters whose abilities are more useful than other characters, and sometimes it's just a matter of preference. Like, I kind of settled on the characters that I like to use, and I don't change them very often at all. Like, I just like these characters, but they're probably not the same character. <laughs> That's... Well, cover is important with aerial enemies. With ground-based enemies, it's usually not that important. But, as I was saying, if you were to watch high-level players playing other high-level players who are not me, they're probably playing with a totally different set of characters in a lot of instances. And that's what I did when I went through this on uh, easy, just by myself. I chose characters... Uh, change their weapons, tried to figure out, you know, a loadup that I liked. And I have two characters that never leave my life. Yeah, Brandy actually put a lot of time into figuring out just which characters she liked. Me, I did some experimentation, but not nearly as much. 
All right, where's this last? There he's he is. You can see somebody's using tornadoes. That's mine. My favorite system. Yeah, there's there's a lot of cool variety to character abilities, like I said. Also, the music is pretty cool. Like, different characters have different music, and then at different times in a level, it'll start playing a cool tune like this one. And some of the music is from past EDF games, which is also a treat. The spiders on the left, I'm doing a, oh God. A missiles. So, just watch out. On the left? Okay, I'm glad yep. I'm not on the left. I need to charge up the Prowl Rider's attack so I can show off his ability. Mm -hmm. Special move, that is. Ah! Kill those spiders. Yeah, Heaven Smile, that's very good of you to remember. The series did start as a PlayStation 2 game, a Japanese PlayStation 2 game, part of the Simple 2000 series. And these are games that were meant to retail for $20, 2,000 yen. And so they didn't have big budgets. You know, like, EDF was deliberately low budget from the very start. Joe or Cowboy Brother, either way. Ow! I didn't do that one. Yeah, I someone, was totally faced away from y'all. <laughs> oh well. <laughs> it's usually me, guys. That's why I always say that. <laughs> ah. That's also why I told them I was shooting down to the left. Yeah. We're doing really great. I'm glad. Mm -hmm. Sniper 2. Heaven's Smile, are you being facetious or serious when you praise that? One Chanbara was part of the Simple 2000 series. The One Chanbara series is from the same publisher, D3 Publisher, and they're still making those games every now and then. There's a couple for PlayStation 4, I believe. And the two main characters from One Chanbara, they are DLC characters in this game. Like, if you buy the Deluxe Edition or if you just buy the DLC, then you can play as Aya and Saki from One Chanbara. Saki's pretty good. Um, the other one I didn't like as much. Oh. So there's a nice textless communications, voiceless communication system here. Although the missions keep ending too quickly, they're not chattering at the end of the mission, so I can't really show it off. But we'll do that soon. Cool. Yeah, and out of all D3 publishers' games, Earth Defense Force is the one that's taken on the biggest life. Ooh, level 3 weapon we didn't have before. And level 3 accessory, Red Jaguar Sneakers. And he leveled up. He's level 8, which is really nice. Air Raider from EDF 5. That's another cool thing. It has variants of all the default EDF classes. Like the Ranger, it's got the Ranger from every single EDF game. Because they're all slightly different, like in either appearance or abilities. And I'm using two different Wing Divers. They're both different. Although they're both from EDF5, they're just variants, so not quite the same. Come on, Tom. Way to go to Crow, showing off that subscription. Nice. I don't remember to Crow being a subscriber. Is is that new to Crow, or, or what's going on there? Yeah, I don't know why our Skype is being so weird, Lyle. It's actually your end off. You think so? I mean, you're probably right. Ah. Come on. There. Down. Everyone can jump, by the way. I don't do a lot of jumping, but they all can. Oh, God. There we go. Kill the anthill. I got the other one over here. I'm about to rescue this guy. So, one benefit of getting kills with a character is that it charges up their special move, their SP move. If you look behind my head, the 25% right there, that's the SP meter. I don't like the way the the ones you have to rescue sometimes are a little <laughs> hidden. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Every level you're always trying to rescue all the the people who need to be rescued, right? And yeah, mm -hmm. it, sometimes you have to really look around for oh, them. Oh, sorry, Tom. Uh, yeah, 
I'm in desperate need <laughs> health now. Uh, oh. there's. I'll get you some. Props. I have to be very, very careful because my preferred weapons are missile launcher, mince, bleh, missiles launchers, and bomb launchers. And they do splash damage. Yeah, so that's why I should. Especially be on this level where it's hundred percent. Yay, we destroyed it. Yeah, there is friendly fire, and the difficulty level affects how strong friendly fire is, like how much we can hurt each other. On easy, you can scarcely hurt each other at all, and it's perfect for little kids or whatever. But on Inferno, obviously, we do a lot of damage to each other. Look at this Sphinx here. The Sphinx is very simplistic visually. Not exactly impressive compared to what you would see in Minecraft or something. But some of the levels are kind of pretty. One thing about the level design compared to a regular EDF game is regular EDF games are a little more exploration based and you're more grounded. Like everybody starts in one part of a level and they slowly move their way to other parts of the level and take, a lo take on the enemies along the way. But in this one, the levels, they're all basically flat or semi-flat um, squares, right? And you can go to any part of the level at any time if you have a character who can move fast. So it's it's different, you know, it's built in a less linear fashion in each level. You just go around the level and find the enemies, find the collectibles, whatever you need to. Also, Thank you. if I'm not sure if we've rescued all the people in the level, I can push start and check, even when we're in multiplayer. And there it says that we've got four out of four. So we found Kaiju. them Kaiju. Kaiju, where? where the big noise is coming from. Oh, well. <laughs> Agreed, Bob Jones. More dinosaurs, the better. And it's a shame the second extinction is still pretty rough in early access, because that game looks really cool if, the, if they refine it well enough. If you want to show off the dragon sister, let me know so I can stop shooting this. Ah! Yeah, yeah no, I, I already punched the kaiju a lot, so I'm trying to show other stuff. Okay. I just want to make sure... Yeah, it is easy to hit him. <laughs> By the way, if you don't like the English voices, you know, they're fine. They're I think they're actually pretty good, mostly. But if you don't like them, you can switch the voices to Japanese, and that's how Lyle plays. Anyway. Alright, well, if we hit him enough, he's probably just going to run out of the level. And check it out. Yeah. The NPCs are even commenting on it. They're telling you he can't be destroyed, so you don't have to like get frustrated over it. Because in a regular EDF game, the first time you meet a kaiju, you usually can't beat it. Heaven smiled. Dino Stalker, was that a... Gosh. Is that a Neo Geo game? It sounds like... I, once you clarify, I'll certainly remember it, but yeah, you gotta refresh my memory a little. We're kicking that kaiju's butt. Mm -hmm. We got good weapons. Oh yeah, it's it's a gun game. What was it released on? Was it PlayStation 2? I feel like PS2. I might have even owned it at one point. Like, I've sold off a lot of my classic game collection, you know? And sometimes the collections were pretty big. PS2 only. Yeah, that is a shame, because... I mean, I wish there were more gun games. Now that that's, that Sinden, I think is the name of the brand, gun has been invented for PCs and stuff, they're really... They should make one for consoles, and then they should just start making fresh Time Crisis games and House of the Dead and whatnot. We're dead. All right, go team! And they are making a new, a remake of House of the Dead 1 and 2 for Switch and probably other platforms. Same company that made the remake of Panzer Dragoon. Ah, that sucks. are you sure we're done? Because he's still fighting. It said it triggered the event. Pretty soon. Capcom had a Resident Evil type series of dinosaurs in it, didn't they? What was that one called, Tom? Tom? Sorry, what? Do you remember Capcom's Resident Evil style 
survival horror series that featured dinosaurs instead of monsters? Dino uh, Crisis. No, actually, I don't. Uh, well, Tyler answered for us. Good man, Tyler. It's nice to have you around, Tyler. I'm sorry that we're doing the co-op thing that we couldn't involve you in tonight. Dino Crisis, he says. Yeah, that was a cool series, and a lot of people wish that they'd bring it back. Grad Ziki. Didn't they bring it back a few years ago and then just promptly let it go into the oblivion? I don't know if there's been one since the original Xbox. The original Xbox had Dino Crisis 3, I think it was. Well, and... the original was arcade, but yeah. Oh, wait. No, you're thinking of a different series. Yeah, Dino Crisis was in the arcade. I'm, you're, you're thinking of something else. This is a survival horror series. Somebody needs to click through their stuff. Is it you, Lyle? There it goes. Oh, Dino Crisis was definitely never paid. Can anyone think of what Tom's thinking of? <laughs> There's Primal Rage. Are you thinking of Primal Rage? No. This is, uh, if I remember correctly, Dino Crisis was, uh, the original arcade was on the computer. Oops. Mother it's not the same series. It's something same else. Title. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he was thinking. I'm sorry, guys. We're on Skype, and it turned out to not be ideal for stream audio. Although it used to be fine. I don't know why. What the deal is? Your internet's not good enough. Get fiber. We could switch. I've got the best internet available in in my apartment. Unfortunately, like we've got the top tier cable, but they do not offer fiber optic. The cable internet is it's not stable. One second to the next. Hey, Brandy. Thank you very much for resubscribing. <laughs> Royal Bob told me he was going to resubscribe, and he never did. Broke my heart. Oh, what'd you say? She made a mistake. She meant to subscribe to a different stream. Oh, that's not right. Let's subscribe to Tyler's stream. Oh, wait. Tyler doesn't stream anymore. Very sad. Ah, Sidoros falling from the sky. Let's beat him up. Okay, I'm top left of the map. I kind of lost my orientation. Uh, I'm just saying. I'm, I'm shooting rockets. <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> just don't shoot them at me, lady. That's why I'm telling you where it's <laughs> You think that's why, Bob Jones? Oh, Bob Jones, did you ever say what was so unusual about today? Because I was actually interested. I wish the grappling hook could actually grab on enemies and pull them towards you. That'd be really fun. I can join that way, or I can go to the here. Take that! Punch the crap out of you! Yeah! Yeah, take that, punk. Oh no, I thought I got killed. So this Dragon's History character I'm playing with, it's been a staple character for me ever since I learned what she can do. But there's other people like Icky who don't use melee characters at all. Like, it, it's all up to you how you want to play, you know? A very good amount of freedom is present. I have a few of every, like one of everything. Yeah, I try to make kind of a balanced team myself. Although right now I've got the two wing divers who are both snipers. It's just because I like sniping so much. Yeah. Alright, All right, now what's going to happen? Phase one. Where's that? Yep, there's more. Uh oh, cinematic. We don't need to skip it. We want to see what's happening. What's the mothership doing? Bob Jones says the sky is brown. I'm pretty sure it's brown, uh, blue. Blue. He says, are we on for tomorrow? Yeah, Wolfblade wants to know if I'm going to play Strange Brigade with him tomorrow. And the answer is yes. Although I need to figure out if we're doing anything for Father's Day first. Because it turns out that tomorrow's Father's Day. Hey, Slippy, thank you for the follow.
Look at the scale of this. I love fighting these giant enemies. Ah. I like running up and punching him to death. Oh, you're punching? Ah. Crap. Oh. That was a nice explosion. Yes, sorry. <laughs> Randy shows her affection through explosions. Yes, I love missile launchers and bomb launchers. Ow! Oh, dang it. And he just killed my character. Alright, whatever. I did. I stopped there. Well, he did the finishing blow. This can be really challenging. We're at the beginning of the game, but some of the late game missions are super hard. Which is... Mm. Oh no. All of my characters are down. When you're down to your last character, you can crawl around like I'm doing right now, and you can try to crawl towards someone who can pick them up. And I would love it if one of you guys would come pick one of my characters up, because it's no good for us all to be down. Oh, I see. Bob Jones says, in real life, the sky is brown. Well, Bob Jones, I hope that doesn't mean that it's the end of days or something. Thank you. Ah! Oh, great! I got killed right away by the explosion from the kaiju. <laughs> that sucked. It's time to get out of here. Let's go get some help. Ah! Run! Uh, my character... Oh, thank you. Yeah, my character was too grounded to get away from oh, everything. That's too bad. You destroyed my cover. I need some health badly. I didn't destroy any cover. It was Whoever me. The oh, Brandy. The tornadoes. Gotcha. My favorite sister. So we need to kill the Cideroses. Got one of them. I'm so far from the health. Well, Lots of smoke. Got off my special right before you me. <laughs> That's actually a good amount of damage to do. Not bad. This is certainly the hardest level out of the mm -hmm. early levels that we've played so far. Agreed. And he's down. Nice. Yeah, Here's some health. Guys. Good job. Great job, guys. There we go. Full health. Much better. Yeah, Somebody even picked up one of my other characters. Oh, God. Oh, almost died from that. I'm going to use my special... I forgot to turn on the cinematics for the specials. When you do these moves like that, it does a cool cinematic. I need to turn them on so the audience can see them. But we, we eventually turn them off because we've seen them all. And every time somebody does a special. Man, he's still killing me. I was trying to get away from it. Well, I did rescue several of your guys. Of the, C my guys. the C asks if you could shoot rockets at the spaceships, the drop ships. Yes. Oh yeah, definitely. There are times... You have to wait till a level involves that, but yeah, you can. Let's get away. Yeah. Running away. There we go. Now I got both of my snipers back. I'll keep my distance and hopefully not get killed by that huge energy attack he has. By the way, we were playing on Steam, and so I've got the game on maximum visuals, which, you know, it's just some extra little graphical effects and stuff. But you can play it on an older PC, and it runs really well. Like, so if you've got a PC that's capable of some gaming, but it's not super hot, I still, you'll probably still be safe buying the Steam version. Yeah, I have a very old. And the Switch version, which I did play when I was working on my review, the Switch version looks really good. It's it's nearly as smooth as this. It's not 60 frames per second, but other than that, it's quite a good-looking game. He's dead. Hey, Shitsu, we're glad to see you. That's Final Days, by the way. That's a special weapon in some of the EDF games. 
they made it this character's special move. My cows! Even if it's dead. Yeah, in this particular game, the cube earth has been, or voxel earth they call it, it's been separated, so we have to put it back together by defeating the enemies. Shih Tzu is also fun. Very fun. Yes, very fun. I said it. I, I was thrown off by the graphics, but I've been hooked since day one. Yeah, I'm glad because, I mean, it's got great co-op. You know, playing together with friends, just like any regular EDF game, it's a very good experience. But even the single player is still pretty fun and addictive. Like, Brandy played a lot of single player. Mm -hmm. So, everybody in the audience, what have you guys been playing this week? I would love to hear about your gaming week. It was E3 week, of course, so we also could talk about E3. But first, I'd like to hear what you've been playing. Go team. It's weird having the chat off to the side like this, you know? Like, I'm used to kind of looking at the chat and the screen at the same time. So, it feels different. It feels like I'm talking to myself instead of talking to all you guys. Because you guys are over there, and I'm looking here. Well, Bob says Chivalry 2. Chivalry? Chivalry 2, that's right. Chivalry 2 came out either this week or last week, I forget. We did stream the original Chivalry a long time ago, I believe. It's a medieval, mostly melee combat game, like a PvP game. But I think there's arrows and stuff, too, if I remember right. Nice. Thyrenia got to finish Tell Me Why, which was recently free on Xbox, which was really cool for Pride Month. And that's an adventure game. I had you pick it up, by the way. But that's an adventure game from the people who made that one game with the girl and the decisions. But tell me why, developer. What else did they make, guys? I normally know it. Life is Strange. That's it. Deep from Galactic. <laughs> Mongbox has been playing Roblox, probably with her kids, I bet. Yeah, I mean, if you like Roblox, isn't that a voxel game, too? Shitsu started the Messenger on Game Pass because it's leaving at the end of the month. Yeah, I guess you better hurry. What kind of game is the Messenger, Shitsu? Darker Players playing Evil Within 2, which I did play and review when it came out, and I also streamed it once. There's a Fargo in me. It's a good horror game. Ooh, nice and Fargo. Tanks. So I'm going to rescue this person. That wasn't a Fargo, it was a tank, sorry. A trooper from Earth Defense Force, Iron Rain, has been rescued. Whoa. Here's another one to rescue. This is Amigo Brother, which, like Tyler said, is a bit of a stereotype character. I say a bit. He's totally a stereotype character of Mexico. In Japan, he's called Taco Brother. Yes, in Japan, he is called the Taco Brother. So, Amigo Brother, that's, that's certainly an improvement. Or is it? Because tacos are pretty great. Ninjas. He's talking about ninjas. One anthill down. It's like, no, I don't think it's ninjas. Man, that's a long time to live without ninjas. Oh, nice. An action platformer or a Metroidvania. I happen to love Metroidvania, so maybe I should look into that. So we got green anthills to kill everyone. That one's dead. Mm. My pirate brother now has 24,000 health. Ooh, that's a lot of health. Yeah, mine did not have nearly so much. Nice. Give me that health. He's one of the two I do not remove from my lineup. Hey, someone shot me. He was one of my characters, I think. Break that building. 
-hmm. Good job, Tom. Yeah, I'm just better. I'm sure lucky I right. didn't meet when that explosion went off. Uh oh, bunch of enemies over that way. I was on my dragon sister destroyed buildings. There's always time for chitter chatter. People praise the story and dialogue. That sounds cool. I haven't played a Metroidvania game in a while. I really need to. Here we got a cinematic. Again, you usually want to get this in the middle of a level in a regular EDF game. Quick as lightning. Kotaro. Kotaro. It's actually Kotaro. He said it slightly wrong. Kotaro. Anyway. All right, there's the one thing. They did a cinematic, and then they brought us back, but we moved. It warps you to a slightly different spot, yeah. Or sometimes a much different spot. Mm -hmm. Also, sometimes when one of your character dies, I mean, you're encouraged, of course, to switch to a different one and res them, but sometimes they spawn you across the map. Oh yeah, every now and then. That can be frustrating. And it happens to you more often than me for some reason. I don't know. Maybe my other people are slacking. <laughs> Who knows? They're like, you just shoot rockets and everything. What about us? Ah, spider. Lots of spiders. Yeah, I'm trying to actually charge up this move, but this particular gun he's using, I guess it's not necessarily super well suited for it. Using the thunder bow. Mm. I'll have one in a minute. Wow. Nope. Must be nice. Of course, I'm not really picking up a lot of yellow power ups either. Ah! Ha ha! There it is. <laughs> oh, the cinematic looked like Speed Racer, Tyler, you think? I didn't really think so. Or do you mean the messenger looks like Speed Racer? Did you actually play it too, Tyler? Ah. Yeah, I'm surprised I haven't heard of it. That hill down. Oh. <laughs> gotcha. Yeah, I can use her special. Let's do it. Final days. Ooh. Isn't there another round ah. Oh, I don't babe. think so, but we'll find out. Oh no, did it hit you? I'm sorry. Okay. We beat the level though. There mm -hmm. you go. So now we'll show off the singing. Uh, hey! That's cold. <laughs> so in the regular EDF games, you can often sing a little song through the chat system. In this one, you can sing three different songs. The song for Media 4, the song for Media 5, and a new one for World Brothers. So, if you like the singing, this is the best EDF ever. There you go. Ah. Tyler says it's not a bad game, The Messenger. Elephant Jacket. Is it made of real elephant? Ooh, level 4 weapon. Mega Plasma Launcher R. That's not bad. I'll have to go check that one out. And Spartan Zephos, uh, a Spartan dagger or sword. Although... The only melee weapon I need is the punching one that I use. my duty in Edo and was on my way back to my village. I was into a Sorry about that everybody. Um okay. Disc yeah. 
Nice to see there are weapons that have bouncy bullets like that and this. Okay, I'm actually using a sniper rifle that has bouncy electricity. Don't know how that works, but <laughs> yeah. I'm sure it's great. Oh, here's something I should point out, how the edges of levels work. Let me get to the edge of a level. Flying on my cloud. Homie Drew, we're glad you made it. So this level is surrounded by water, and a lot of levels just have edges you can fall off. So here, if you fall off, like I'm about to do, you just spawn back up on land, and... Oh, she lost it half her life. You. That was pretty... I didn't think it'd be that much. Oh, yeah, it but, hurt you. Oh, well. So you don't want to fall off the edges in all the levels. They're all like that. There's no level with walls around the outer edges. But apparently you have to be careful about falling in water because you'll get stuck. Whether you want to or not. Oh yeah, that did happen to you once, didn't it? Yeah, it kind of trapped me in the water. But it's not by design. I think it was just being buggy. Kicked your butt. Ah, apparently my character can go over buildings. That's funny. Let's go pick up that downed character. Whose is that? That's mine. I'll help. There you go. Lyle is competing with me to help. He's such a nice guy, our Lyle. He saves our butt. Yeah, because it's the summer, Brandy and I don't have to work and we don't have to go to... Well, we mostly don't have to work, and we don't have to go to bed at a certain hour, usually. So we've been playing more with Lyle, like more multiplayer, nearly every day. And some days with Tom. But Tom gets sleepy very easily. Oh, it works. Some of us actually do have to work. <laughs> works I was going to say, you're probably about to fall asleep right now, aren't you, old-timer? Uh, dude, Aww. I would if I could. Aww. Ah. Brandy, why do you shoot rockets at other players? <laughs> I don't. I shoot rockets oh, oh. at enemies. I mean, but you can see that the other players are in the general area. No. Uh, the Western columns are behind us. The what's? The big mecha thingy. Oh. That we can ride? No, the bad ones. Oh. Well, that's not good. Reload already, you jerk. Okay. Or there we go, got him. Did you drop any health? Yes, he did. Yeah, I need some. He's down. Let's pick this person up. I'm all the way across the map? There you go, darling. Thank you. We did it, we beat the level. You can also do gestures. Let me show a gesture. As an appropriate gesture, Paul. <laughs> Just did a salute. And gestures are not something you'll basically ever need to do, but there is a Steam achievement for doing them. Bow. Gesture. First fist raise. Yeah. There you go. Yeah, that would be terrific, Val. We, Thyrenia, we'd love to play more with you this summer. And I'm glad that I'm supposed to play a game with Ryan tomorrow. Because I'm going to be reviewing the game Strange Brigade for Co-Optimus. Go, oh, Icky. Strange, yeah, nice job, Icky. Strange Brigade is a third-person shooter from Rebellion, the developer of Zombie Army. Emerald 2, yes. heck yeah. And the Sniper Elite series. It's one of my favorite weapons. So. Tight. So anyway, it came out on Xbox like two years ago, I think, and it was on Game Pass and everything. But I didn't play it when it was on Game Pass, and that's a shame. But it did just come out on Switch, and I wrote an article about it, so I hope everybody will read that link from the newsletter. But anyway, they, the publisher asked me if we'd like to review it, so I said, yeah. So I'm going to review it and play co-op with my pal Wolfblade. Good luck, everyone. Thank you, Mubot, for showing off a couple of my articles. Those are two of the most important articles. 
our EDF World Brothers review, and my hands-on impressions with the game Lumberhill. Lumberhill just came out on PC, and that is... Oh, great. Is it being buggy again? Yep. Uh, Lumberhill is basically overcooked, but with lumberjacking instead of cooking. You know, it's a four-player party game, and it's seriously fun. Like, they need to release it on consoles, and it is coming to Switch, but I really hope it comes to Xbox and PlayStation 2. So how did we get out of this last time? Yeah, it's not even letting me back out. There we go. Okay. Gotta kill the room and reinvite you guys because the lobby's being buggy again. You can do it, guys. Create a room. Of course, Lyle's gonna have to get back into the room. I hope that doesn't slow things down. Don't forget, Lyle, we're inviting you back into the room. Randy Bell, Icky, and from Zero to Hero. You don't actually have to invite me to realize that, right? I don't have to, but I do because I care. You're I, important, Tom. I tell him that every time. She's important, too. Thank you. Uh, it's more that it just spammed my uh, freaking uh, message thing on uh, Steam. <laughs> yeah. Puts hair on your chest. I don't need yeah, hair on my chest. hair on my chest, I can do without <laughs> I could do without anyway. Oh lordy. I'm just going there you go, the sea. Yeah, and my impressions article did not make one reference to Monty Python. I apologize for that. Not even the Holy Grail? <laughs> no, well, I mean, I was writing about a Lumberjack game, so I should have referenced the Lumberjack song. I will have to say that we we did reference it last night when we were playing this game. Oh yeah. You're right, so we kind of make up for it that way, don't we? Hey, guys. I got homing missiles that won't kill you. You know, I wonder if Tyler's ever seen any Monty Python. I, I would think so. Yeah, because he, he missed out on a lot of 80s stuff, but a lot of people catch, you know, catch on to Monty Python, or at least are exposed to it later on in life. A lumberjack of pancakes? Is that a thing? Well, in the lumberjack game I'm talking about, Lumberhill, it's not just chopping down trees. Like, there's also shepherding sheep for some reason, because maybe lumberjacks do that. I don't know. But you, you also get to collect dinosaur eggs, because there's levels with dinosaurs, which are quite fun. It looked really cool. The art was very nice. Yeah, it's pleasant. A little cartoony, but it was beautiful. Because it's a, it's a family game. Kids love mm -hmm. Overcooked. Hey, the story right now is pretty goofy. Like, sometimes it's decently serious, but right now, for a few levels, they're just looking for ingredients for miso soup. Just, it's goofy. You know, it's harmless. I still think the writing is better than EDF5's writing. Like, EDF5's writing disappoints me sometimes. Yes, the developers thought it was very important for everyone to learn what miso soup is for some reason. And all about it. And fermented beans. Yeah, just all the ingredients of it. Like how they make tofu and whatnot. That's funny, Royal Bob. I mean, I, I'm sure it's true for some people. But also, I didn't know there even was esports for Farming Simulator. Like... Mm. I wonder how that works. Because Farming Simulator is cooperative, not competitive by default. And by the way, for people who like Farming Simulator, I streamed a similar sim game last week called Train Station Renovation, in which you renovate train stations for some reason. It's a weird topic for a game, but I thought it was quite fun and relaxing. It was like that Demolish and Rebuild. Yeah, it was like Demolish and Build. From the same publisher. <laughs> My weapons are sending them flying. Nice. Mm -hmm. They deserve it. I didn't bring any weapons with homing. If you have homing weapons, they're super good against these guys. Mm -hmm. And they even just said that, the NPCs. 
Yeah, that's wild that there's tournaments for Farming Simulator, of all things. We did it. We did it. Which game is that, Darker Player? An Xbox Series exclusive game coming out next month? I'm looking forward to an Xbox game coming out next month, and also on PlayStation and Steam, called Orcs Must Die 3. I don't know if you guys remember, but the very first Orcs Must Die came out way back in 2011 on Xbox 360. But then Part 2 didn't come out on consoles, and that sucked. Part 3, thankfully, is, and it looks really good. That's older than my daughter. Oh. Cool, Tyler. Then you'll have to check it out, too. And I hope you'll read the article. You know, everybody on our Discord, we have, like, I post links to the articles when they come in. And, of course, I don't expect everybody to look at it all the time. But if you ever can, please go back and look at a few of them, you know? Just the same as we like for people to do with our YouTube videos. It also lets the developers know that we're actually playing their games and, you know. Yeah, like, hits on the more. YouTube videos are very important because... Again, it helps encourage the developers to give us codes. And hits on the articles are important because, one, it helps me to get paid, and two, it helps me, again, get codes from the developers. Darius 3. Not bad. Darius 3. I love that series of shoot 'em ups the Darius or Darius series. I don't know how it's actually supposed to be said. Probably Darius, huh? Darius, I'm pretty sure. Oh, way to go, Tyler! And it's not like he was on mic tonight. He just legitimately entered. Who else won besides Tyler? I already had won something. Oh, Tyler, wasn't that game... What was that game called? Orcs Must Die... Like, some kind of subtitle. But I didn't realize that was actually based on Part 2. Yeah, that would be cool to crow, but I don't have it on PlayStation. The developers this time... Again, they did give it to me on Switch and Steam, which is super nice of them. But I didn't get it on PlayStation, so I can't can't play it on that till it goes on sale someday and I pick it up. This is my very unfavorite level. Oh yeah, Brandy doesn't like this environment. Although there is a rainbow bridge and you can actually get up on it. I mean, the rainbow bridge is beautiful, but the flying here is just so Whee! awful. Look at that. I'm on a rainbow bridge. I'm shoving rocket, or sorry, missiles down ants' butts. Oops, I'm shooting the edge. It's a living. It's not really the best way for me to fight. That didn't go well. But I can get that guy. Mario Kart. Heaven Smile, right now I'm having a blast with this one, and I am totally excited about getting all the way to 100% on both the base game and the DLC. But my favorite EDF is EDF 5, because it just really refines the series very nicely. Like, EDF 5 has a lot of cool improvements, and some of them made it into this game, but not all of them. But, I mean, I've got, like, 53% online completion of EDF5, and that's, like, hundreds of hours to do that. That's It's not a quick process. No. And we had crazy hours. Yeah, I think so. we played it for over 250 hours, if I remember right. It was a lot. That hurt. Yeah, we had another friend who played EDF with us a lot on Steam. You know, he played 5 with us and a little bit of this. But he kind of had a recent heel turn and decided not to be friendly anymore. For no apparent reason. And, you know, it's a disappointing thing. But he was always a little weird, so it's not 100% out of left field, I guess. Tom still loves us. Yeah, we still got Tom and Icky, and that's what's important. Because these two are my bros. Ah, that's a lot of rockets. Stop shooting me. I'm not shooting towards you anymore. Could be the NPC. It does look like you're shooting explosives, though. I am shooting explosives, but I'm shooting in where they're not aimed at anybody. Yeah, well, I I see. I did get hit by one, but... Could have been anybody. What are you talking about? 
I got hit by an explosion. It's not important. Yeah, when all of y'all were in the middle, I stopped using my rockets. I really wish I had the level 4 Pythagoras, because I'm really used to playing with the Pythagoras, but I only have a level 3, and it wouldn't be strong enough on this difficulty. Oh, let's go rescue those people before it's too late. <laughs> I'm coming, lady. Xbox is grown in Japan, Darker Player says. I don't know. I was under the impression that it's still doing terribly there. What do we got now? Uh, flyers. Oh, great. Flyers, and I don't have homing. Alright. I'm going to be shooting straight up. Oh, there's, but there's ants coming just on the left. These are the flying drones from Earth Defense Force 4.1, also known as EDF 2025, sort of. They were not in EDF 5. That's a cool thing about this game is you'll see enemies from all kinds of different EDFs in it. Dara, I'm trying to point away from you. I need to rescue this guy. You tell him, Moobot. Dupes are not welcome here, everyone. This ninja's accent is kind of awful. Attempts were unsuccessful. Now they're teaching us about soybeans. Very important information, right? Oh god, getting hit. Not me. I'm dead. I'm getting myself done. Hey! Rude. I did not know that about soybeans. Now I'm a soybean expert, all thanks to Earth Defense Force World Brothers. What is she doing over there? Hey, I love them. Edamames. Yeah, I mean, not just miso soup, but edamame in particular, which is cooked soybeans. Very good. My daughter loves Yes. She would eat them all day long. and Yeah, that's true. She's crazy about them. We're pretty fond of them too, aren't we? Mm -hmm. Sometimes you just gotta punch an ant to death. Ow! Okay, uh, anyone want to help pick up some of my characters? You're all dead again? Yeah, my weapons are not necessarily that great for close range combat. I've got the two sniper rifles. I'm coming. And the thunder bow, it just reloads too fast. How does reloading too fast is a bad thing? I mean, it has to reload too fast. It has too little ammo. Oh, that's what you mean. That yeah, my bad. <laughs> it does. Okay, I think we're almost done. Let's do this. Sometimes an ant needs to punch you to death. That's right. So after we beat this level, we're going to go ahead and wrap things up, I suppose. Unless there was anything important that you think you, that you guys think we should have shown everyone. Uh, no. Uh, oh, Brandy says. Sorry. <laughs> You're a terrible ragdoll. And your I'm name is Annabelle. <laughs> oh, not with physics. I see. Let's go rescue my people I since nobody else anymore. would. Yeah, I already rescued like two of them. I don't even mm. need rescue. <laughs> no, they were he didn't they were die. both still down. Maybe that was someone else's. Let's go find that last enemy. She's calling again. Got him. Thank you. Flying and sniping. By default these wing divers, they're not snipers in this particular game. But you level them up and then they can use other abilities. And then that way, instead of having to bring one guy who's a sniper and a wing diver, 
I just bring them one who can do both things. Hey! Yes, because the flying would definitely not be a problem. So is it uh, recoil weapon. <laughs> For real. Okay, guys. Um, that works. I have to go take a phone call. So. Uh, okay. Give me the controller. Mm -hmm. It's tangled up around your headset. Yeah. The Rainbow Bridge. You remember the Rainbow Bridge from the Thor movies, everybody? My well, it was in the Yeah, it was in the first one, anyway. It's also a bridge between Canada and New York. Fancy. You can see all over the place here. Wow, Heaven Smile, I didn't know they were bad for animals. How does that work, if you don't mind telling us real quick? Who won the Switch code, everyone? Mythic Katana already had that. Penetrator. Yeah, decent drops. Dogs and cats can have heart attacks because they don't know what's happening. And birds die from it too. Wow, that's terrible. Yeah, I don't like the sound of that. Everybody make sure you clear off your drops so we can proceed, please. We need to wrap it up. There we go. So we're going to... Oh, real quick, I'll show off emblems. There's a bunch of unlockable emblems here. It takes a little while to load. It'll tell you how to unlock them. Like, defeat 3,000 enemies with gold weapons, for instance. But anyway, these are just a way of customizing your team. People can see them when you win MVP at the end of a level. Or you see them just when you're getting your armor drops. But there's just a ton of these. You know, they're nothing really special. I do like this one that says EDF, EDF. So part of the, not you're not just playing for achievements. One thing you can play for is to get all the emblems. You know, completionists will enjoy this about it. And I've got a whole lot of them, but I'm still missing some. So, fun little aspect of the game. I think we already talked about accessories and stuff. <laughs> So, everybody, once again, we have been playing Earth Defense Force World Brothers. I'm going to go ahead and kill the game. This is developed by Ukes and published by D3 Publisher. It's available on PlayStation, Switch, and Steam. It's a spin-off of the regular Earth Defense Force series. This one is made to be more approachable. It's a fan service game, so it's got characters from lots of EDFs and also lots of original characters. And it's a whole lot of fun. It is a $60 game. Yeah, you guys, I'm glad you enjoyed seeing the game. And uh, it's been a lot of fun to play. I, I really like it. Remember, I reviewed this at Co-Optimus. And uh, there's still going to be a regular Earth Defense Force game after this, Earth Defense Force 6. That's due either this year or next year. So you can still look forward to that, but I do recommend getting this now. And there's DLC characters and a DLC level pack if you want more. But the base game has a lot of stuff already. So... Thanks all you guys for watching the stream. It's great hanging out with you. Remember, we stream every Saturday at 9 p.m. Eastern, 6 p.m. Pacific. It's always a different game, and we always give out different games as prizes. That's what we're all about here. Variety at Saturday Game School. Tom and Icky, thanks for playing along with me. Always a pleasure. Brandy Bell, thanks for playing too. Always. Excellent. Thanks to all you guys for hanging out with us. We really love hanging out with you guys. And remember, I'm also streaming on Wednesdays during the summer, so please tune in next Wednesday. And remember, don't hate. Appreciate. Bye. Bye, guys. Too bad. That was <laughs> Good thing Tyler was here tonight. I guess he's not so much of an SOB. Thanks for tuning in. The Sea, Tech Crow, Heaven Smile, Shih Tzu, Dre Blinken, Platinum Ace Trick, Thyrenia, Wolf Blade, Jono, Bob Jones, Royal Bob, Living Dead Girl, Mong Box. Really great seeing you, Mong Box. Was Vinny BT here? I didn't. don't know if I saw Vinny BT. Everybody whose names I didn't say. Speak up now. BX Latino Heat. Did I say that? I'm sure I did. Darker Player, of course, was here. It's so good to see you all. 